Hi, Gene Trowbridge. Glad you could make it to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here. And our topic today is capital calls and the IRA investor. Uh, here's the scenario. An investor invests $100,000 through their self-directed IRA into an LLC. And so the IRA is the owner of the interests. The manager makes a capital call, which requires this investor, the IRA, to make a $10,000 contribution. And the document says, if you can't make the contribution, your ownership will be diluted. It doesn't go away, but it's diluted. Well, in the situation we found ourselves in, one investor's IRA did not have the $10,000 available to make the uh, contribution. What can the investor do and not have a prohibited transaction? Well, here's what we can do. The investor can uh, make a contribution. Maybe the investor hasn't made their contribution this year to the IRA for one reason or another. Maybe now, according to the rules, they can make a contribution which will get $10,000 into their IRA and then they can use that for the capital call. Maybe they've made all the contributions that they can make and there's no possibility of putting more money into the account than is allowed. That in itself would be a, a uh, prohibitive transaction. So they could move money from another IRA account into the account that has the ownership and then that account can uh, make the capital call. That's all right, because it's still IRA money and IRA money could move from one, RA, one IRA account to another uh, or do nothing and have their interest diluted. Well, what if the, what if the client just says, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put money in my, in my IRA and make the contribution and I'll face the, uh, the consequences. Well, let's see what those consequences might be. On a disqualified transaction, which would be uh, making a second contribution to your IRA in a year or taking money out of your own pocket and uh, paying for uh, the distribution, the capital call, according to the IRS, there's a 15% penalty on, let's just say the full $10,000. But you have that tax year to correct that transaction, meaning if you were, I'm talking to you now in December, if you were gonna wait till January and you could make a contribution that uh, maybe um, is more than you're allowed to make or whatever, but you put money in there, you'd have till the end of the year to correct that, take that money out or do whatever the correction is. And if you don't correct that bad transaction within that taxable year, there's an additional tax of 100% of the amount involved. So I don't know what all the scenarios are, but there's a possibility you could pay 115% tax on the $10,000 that you contribute, which um, would uh, be painful, right? So. It's a complicated situation. My advice is that if you're a sponsor and your IRA investor comes to you and says, geez, I'd like to make the $10,000 contribution, but I don't have it in my account. What am I going to do? Call the IRA professional. We all have a person who runs the account. You can call them. They can give you advice on what to do. Don't, as a syndicator, give your own tax advice in this situation. Um, you understand the problem. The problem is the IRA is the investor. And if the IRA can't make uh, the contribution, it might be diluted. So somehow the money gets to you, uh, which stops the dilution but is a prohibited transaction within the IRA. So before the people go ahead and do that, they should uh, contact 
uh, the plan administrator and find out what the rules are. So I thought that was important. And you have to be careful, be careful of that right now, just uh, if you're a fund, if you're running a syndication and your investors are IRA investors, uh, be careful. Um, you might even warn them that uh, the capital contribution must come from their IRA. And if that's a problem, they should go see their advisor. So that's it for this uh, YouTube. Uh, thanks for joining us. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.